Welcome to the Reinventing the Tattoo community, uh, where Guy Aitchison's inviting tattooers, apprentices, artists, collectors, the curious, everybody to come together to share, learn, inspire each other, and ultimately get better at their art and tattoos. So this is the Monday morning, nine o'clock Eastern, uh, Reinventing Drawing Group with Jake Meeks from the Fireside Tattoo Network. He's got an awesome YouTube channel and we'll, he'll, we'll talk about it a lot because it's awesome. You should definitely check it out. And while this is going out, you might be checking this out on YouTube or Facebook, but I want to let you know the main places to go to while the stream is propagating through the system. It's reinventing the tattoo in either of the app stores, Apple or Google, and you download it and it's really simple to sign up if you go to the events and we ha has all the listings of all of the different events coming up. You could also go straight to community.reinventingthetattoo.com or the YouTube channel. There's a new Reinventing the Tattoo YouTube channel, brand spanking new, so we could really use those subscribes. I know everyone says it, but seriously, we were like just started it like two weeks ago. Anyways, those are the two main places. Uh, all of our hosts have uh, different spots to go to. And let me share my screen while this is still beaming out and if this is working for you let us know in the, in the chat rooms okay so this is the home page of the reinventing the tattoo community and you can see here the first link is events because that is one of the pillars of what we have going on there's a lot to explore but definitely check out all of these events um okay so yes as i was saying every nine o'clock eastern standard time and you know i guess it's six uh, over on the west coast uh very early for them uh you are invited to beam in so you could see here there's a link that says artists zoom in we can't post this link out on any of the other spots because then the spammers get a hold of it but that's okay because you want to go to this spot in the community and you will always find the zoom links for all these activities so let's see so tonight we have uh at nine o'clock eastern guy Aitchison does exclusive uh, reinventing the Tattoo Canon subscriber exercises. So these are group exercises based off of parts of the Reinventing Canon. It's like used to be 350 to 400 pages with all the guest artists and everything. Uh, now it's this online, it's got all the, it's separated out of courses and lessons and there's all the videos. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Anyways, so that's, uh, that's the, the four pay subscribers exercises tonight at nine o'clock. Um, and yeah, if actually, if you are interested there is a 10% discount if you use the Fireside code. Jake, it's, is it reinventingthetattoo.com slash Fireside? I think that is right, yes. If it's not, it will be by the time this is replaying. I'm sure it is. And then, uh, yeah, then you get 10% off the uh, uh, reinventing for watching uh, Jake and his YouTube channel. Okay, so other uh, events coming up. Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, we have how to build a Paul Rogers style tattoo machine. If you are uh, late to the game, you could still catch up. He basically gives you an ingredient list and you build a machine by hand uh, an hour and a half uh, at a time or an hour and a half a week at a time. Uh, Reinventingthetattoo.com slash build a tattoo machine and the replay for that will be up forever. Let's see, Wednesday at uh, one o'clock, we have an art jam with Stefano Fabridi in Italian. So if you speak Italian or know someone who does, then this would be the perfect uh, stream for them and all of the Italians have a great time and it's awesome just to watch and uh, they, they laugh a lot. It's awesome. So that's uh, the art jam. And if you want to learn Italian and uh, that's, that's perfect. Um, okay. So let's see tattoo collecting podcast at 12 noon, Jordan Rukas and Fawn Baker are tattooing amazing, excuse me, are interviewing amazing tattoo collectors. And I don't know, I keep saying this, but it is true. Every week we get amazing tattoos emailed to us from, you know, from their guests. They also have some special events coming up, a, a bio uh, event coming up with a whole mess of bio tattooers and collectors. Uh, let's see, TED Talk with Robert Shaw at 7 p.m. I believe he's talking to a Kurt Windish. Uh, this is this Sunday, the 7th at 8 p.m. And uh, yeah, so you can see here there's the schedule goes on. You could find all of the replays here in the library. And you'll see we've got the video library. This includes all of the in-house podcasts and, and ser video series with Guy Aitchison doing a ton of interviewing. We've got all the tattoo collecting podcasts, I believe over 25, all of the previous reinventing drawing groups. So if you want to catch up with any of Jake's previous episodes or any of Jason's or any of the other drawing groups, they're actually pretty cool to put on in the background of either tattoos or the front room. People keep 
uh, sending us uh, times where people are like listening to the podcast and like, oh man, uh, the or, or the or the drawing groups and the the clients are like, oh, we want better tattoos now, you know, and they're asking about better tattoos. <coughs> Let's see here. We've got art jams with Ray Little. These are all the all the replays. Uh, an art jam with Brad Wooten, where he uh, goes through his. Uh, uh, how, how do you pronounce it, Jake? It's uh, uh, cyber fluidics. Cyber fluidics. Yeah, yeah look at. It's, oh, it's uh, so cool. Yeah, it's it's really really cool, man. He's a he's a mad scientist for sure. Absolutely. So let's see, what other uh, shows do we have here? Stuff for interesting everybody. Let's talk tattoo uh, with Mark from Needle Jig. He gets into uh, technical talks with all sorts of tattooers. We've got the history of tattoo conventions with Alex Van Dutch from World Tattoo Events, the premier source for tattoo convention information. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. And now, of course, there hasn't been conventions or there's been a couple here and there. Uh, but so it's more important than ever to catch up. And this Wednesday, he's doing an interview with Troy who uh, from Villain Arts, who runs a ton of conventions, probably more than anybody else in the world. Uh, I, I think it won't, uh, he'll tell us uh, or he'll tell Alex. Anyways, so the history of tattoo conventions, uh, there's the the, uh, the Nepal tattoo convention promoter, the first Italian convention, Kim from Brussels, Derb from Hell City fame, it's out of control. We've got drunk critiques, uh, including, oh boy, the nine hour holiday edition mm -hmm. drunk critique, which uh, Tony wrote up about in the new Tattoo Society magazine. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, Tony and Bob will be back to co-host, uh, let's see, Sean Barber is coming on to guest, Ivana, Thea Duskin, uh, Renee Little. Um, there's a couple other people that are lined up. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're only going for three hours. If you have tattoos to submit, um, I think you go to, just go to drunkcritique.com and you'll find the information there. It's probably out of date. It was probably written drunk. It's drunk critique. You can't hold it to a high standard. Let's see, uh, once a month we do Live in the Castro with Haley Adams. She's interviewing LGBTQ, people of color, all sorts of stories you probably haven't heard of before, but you will definitely hear. They're awesome. Uh, all of them. It's, uh, they're very cool. And she gets that right up on the podcast store, so you can go right to the podcast store and do a search for Live in the Castro and you'll catch it. There's all sorts of oil demos and uh, discussion panels, dark skin body art panel, uh, painting a donut with Christina Ramos, uh, Oils 101 with Matt Hurtado. These are all awesome uh, videos that we did over the virtual tattoo gatherings over the summer that include a fantastic wealth of information. Okay, let's see. I want to talk about our real world events that are coming up. So we have the International Brussels Tattoo Convention is happening in November and November 12th to the 14th. So if you are in Europe or are planning on getting vaccinated. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, it's all, this is all travel pendant, you know, and quarantine pending, but it's going to be awesome. And uh, this is in November, so it's far enough out that uh, we're planning on going there and having a reinventing booth and webcasting art jams and webcasting in and out and having all sorts of fun there. And uh, yeah, okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to chat quickly about the reinventing sponsors because they help us make this free. And, uh, and Jake might have some people to add from the fireside for, for these shows, but let's see. So Inkjet Stencils, they have a system where you use the Eco uh, Tank Epson printers. They have regular sized ones and large sized ones. And you can print out you know, you, uh, your stencils straight you know, from your iPad or computer. There is behind this door in the virtual booth here on the app, they have a way for you to get five sample stencils sent to you. Although a fair amount of people just seem to dig it once they kind of see it in action and are just kind of buying it out. There are two different webinars in there. And also Andre Malcolm has a, a video there where he prints out a full back piece. You can print out back pieces and sleeves and stuff. And uh, we'll probably talk about that with Jake. Jake's got a great interview with Malcolm out also on the Fireside mm -hmm. Network. And then Loose Screw Tattoo in Richmond, Virginia is looking for resident tattooers. This is a wicked busy shop uh, down in Richmond, Virginia. Jesse Smith, uh, you know, he was on TV for a while, but that's not even his claim to fame. Uh, you know, he's been, he was awesome before that. He's always been very entrepreneurial minded. He, he runs a really awesome tattoo shop with, as you can see, amazing guests coming through. Uh, the whole crew there is 
pretty awesome. You're, you're going to be inspired every day and busy. You need to not need. Yes, you need to be able to tattoo black and gray and color and kill it. Be nice to your clients. You need to be able to want to learn, be inspired. I keep saying that word. Sorry. Uh, but if you are interested, then go to the join our team, fill it out. Let them know that you heard about it on reinventing the tattoo. They will have an idea that you are already interested in bettering yourself and learning and whatnot. So if this is working for you, wherever you may be watching, please let us know in the chat rooms or the comment section. Definitely please share this around uh, because if I, if I beam it around too many places, people dig it, but then I get banned and I don't, I don't that's not so cool. So uh, this is, the, you know, anyways, I am going to be in the background. I will have a browser up. So if anybody wants to, uh, talk about their inspirations, and there's a chance that we might fire it up and uh, you can inspire the, the panels. Uh, we have, let's see, uh, Ricardo and Morag and Jason on the line here. So I'm going to step back and hand it over to Jake. All right, cool. Oh, Thanks, I didn't Jake. do that right. Sorry, I need to go to, we'll get this smooth before too long. Okay. Got Cheers, it. thank you very much. Yeah, man, thanks. Cheers. I, I missed. I was, uh, I, I was I was multitasking. T say again what um, uh, you you got another drunk critique coming up when the ninth March 9th. It's ninth. the not this Tuesday next Tuesday and uh, gotcha. yeah we're gonna we're gonna stay up late today to make sure that the rest of March's schedule is flushed out because there's a couple special events coming up that are they're all yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, sweet. Those are so much fun. I always feel like such an idiot the next day. Like ah, oh, what did I say? But uh, I love them. You know, I've uh, yeah, I've only gone back to review a couple of them, but they're they're best they're best lived in the experience, and then for people to relive. You know, I might uh, I might set it up so that you can't skip ahead, because I could put these into our educational platform where it forces you to watch it, which yeah. means that people would have to watch through the the first you know six hours to get to Joey Cap coming in and busting China, and then Paul Booth coming in and chilling it all out. But right now, people could kind of skip ahead straight to you know. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a ever 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 maturing, ever growing. I don't know. It has its ebbs and flows. The last one took us three months, I think, two two and a half three months now to have another one. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. yeah. <laughs> March 9th, everyone. Yeah. It's a, it's it's a it's a blast. Yeah, it gotta, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It looks like you got to sure. put it in the drunk tank for a second, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let it, let I was gonna say, I thought bit. my hangovers took a while to recover from, but. Uh, Three months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good it's hard. It's hard to get past a good drunk critique hangover. It's a. Uh, oh it's, man, it, awesome. it lingers. I, I, I've, I've probably told this story before, but I, I met Marcus Leonard on a drunk critique. I never met him before. I only knew him through Instagram, and um, we were both pretty well off, I think. And I guess that we disagreed on something, and it must have gone on because the next day. I, uh, I had multiple messages from people going like, wow, that got a little heated with Marcus, huh? And I went, oh, did it? I, I didn't, I don't remember. And then, and then I got a message from Marcus saying, hey, sorry, sometimes I get a little crazy whenever I'm drinking. <laughs> and I was like, wow, we must have really had, but I never went back to see what actually, what happened. I, I don't, I don't know. So, uh, I'm sure Dang. it was something. I'm sure it was something. Some, sometimes I mean, it's best to leave those mysteries alone. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, what uh, what's everyone working on this morning? Do you have fun projects for this week? Or uh, I'm working on all existing stuff, so I don't have anything new that I have to draw for. But I'm working on something uh, that I started last week. What do you guys have? I, I'm still finishing up my final project. I tweaked it a bit last night. Um, guy popped into the drawing group yesterday and kind of gave me some feedback about um, you know I had the the backlight behind the head of this cherub. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty strong and it was definitely a comp uh, competing light source as far as the where I wanted people to focus mm -hmm. so he's like you know maybe tone that down a little bit maybe bump your your highlights in the face of the cherub a bit that's going to help separate that from the background so I went back through and toned that down kind of I didn't really mute it but I washed it out a little bit mm -hmm. um, just to help these highlights here not compete against the brightness of the background yeah, and that tended to help a lot. Um, went back through, threw some highlights in and some pretty thin lines in the roses. Gave them a couple of nice little drop shadows. Finished up this thigh with this nice big old like stone crack. 
So. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those tricky things, man. I did, um, I did a critique on one of these in like, one of our courses, maybe our foundations course, but uh, you know how a lot of times you'll, you'll have like pieces where they say there's like an angel and then she's, she's backlit and then you have, uh, you know, then there'll be enough light on her face to like, to see what it, you know, to see what it is, you know, see her features. But if you, if you, unless you've introduced a secondary light source uh, on her face, no part of her face, which is in the shadow, should be anywhere near the light that's behind her, which makes it a tricky problem to solve in tattooing. So, um, so, so typically you don't set it up that way, or if you do set it up that way, you have to think about where that secondary light source that's lighting her face is coming from. And it also has to behave that same way on every other foreground or every other element, you know, at least, right. at least elements in the foreground, you know, it could be a really concentrated sharp light source that doesn't affect some background elements. But it's, uh, it's tricky. And uh, someone in our first foundations course was trying to pull that off. And, you know, that course is just about shapes, edges, values, colors, and a single light source. Like we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. Right. And, uh, uh, and they, were, they were really struggling with it and finally just abandoned the idea because, of the, because it's not a real easy problem to solve. Especially, it, like I said, it was a beginner's course. So I mean, I mean, it's not that it can't be solved, but it's just, it's, you know, if you think about, you know, some, like a single light source hitting a sphere, you've got right, reflected right. light on the backside, but that reflected light can't even approach the light in the light side of the object, or it, or it wants to throw that edge forward and, and, you know, make it like compete. It's a, yep. it's a tricky problem. Uh, yeah, so I'm just yeah. kind of going through and tweaking it and detailing now and yeah. probably be posting this up in a little bit because I still have to draw a three quarter sleeve for tomorrow that I have uh, barely even started. Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can like, life. Yeah, that's right. I'm a, my, uh, my habits are rubbing off on you. See, you're always so prepared. Uh, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I literally booked this appointment last, I think last Monday. Mm -hmm. So I haven't even had two weeks to, to get them in. Uh, so usually I'm, I'm far more prepared with this. It's a good friend of mine. It's not like, you know, I haven't tattooed her, but I had a last minute cancellation for tomorrow. So I'm like, well, Hey, you're trying to get this project done. I just had a cancellation. You want to come in on Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And yes. of course she turned around and said, yeah, that'd be great. And I'm sitting back kicking myself in the ass for it now. Yeah. All right. It just takes some time to marinate on it again, you know, you're thinking about yeah, if, it. If I need it, and she's totally cool, like if I need a little bit extra time to work on it, she's totally fine with that. She's like, are, are you sure you can get me in that quickly? I'm like, well, I had the cancellation. It's that or I push you off six weeks. You pay. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. We, we have to keep the uh, running gags going. Ricardo, you're not using those same headphones that you uh, beamed in with the first time, are you? No, man. I never. I laughed at myself today because I was like looking for them and I couldn't you, find them. <laughs> you sound like you're in a so spaceship. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm floating <laughs> through the atmosphere. Uh, you know, ground control. This is good. Major Tom. <laughs> those those look like they should sound great though. They look like high end uh, headphones, much nicer than you know regular whatever right. earbuds. Yeah. No, dude. Those earbuds are on point. These. Yeah. They, they, they're great. I can hear you guys like, like a crystal, but you know, apparently you can't hear me the same way. So that's not right. Yeah, I can, I, can, yeah. I can hear well enough. What, uh, what are you working on? Mike. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on the same. I'm working on two things it's the same way Jason is. I have a tattoo coming up today that I'm going to kind of sketch on and, uh, and kind of form for that. But here's the project that I've been working on uh, for this class. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I worked on it a little bit more last night. Um, that's just with, that's with the line drawing. And then let me show you without the line drawing underneath it real quick. Uh, here we go. And that's more of the softer edge kind of thing that I'm going to try to go for. I don't know if you guys can see it without the glare. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I love yeah. that, how it's all black and gray with just some nice reds in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted to, I want both of them to kind of stand out individually and then uh, be co like comprehensive and cohesive together, you know. So it's like you have this this black and gray section, and then you have the color section. And they kind of just tie together. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more, a little bit more shading back here, and the roses to kind of push them back just a little bit more. But I, I, overall, I just want them to be softer edge. So you know what I mean. So 
So what, yeah. what uh, I don't know this assignment, what are the requirements for the assignment? A uh, back piece, um, a cherub. Uh, somebody asked for like the whole stone uh, statue kind of thing and uh, some, something decorative as far as the archway goes. And I think, that, and then and then roses or flowers of some sort, and that's, that's pretty much. And then trying to tie in all the uh, all the elements of the is drawing. It, is there a requirement that it's a black and gray color combination, or do you guys just both happen to do that? Uh, no, so I, that was one of the questions that was raised: was you know, do you want this done in full color, or do you want this done as just like a monochromatic value study? And um, what we were told was, you know, I'd like to see like at least one red rose in there. So um, that's, it's kind of the way that some of these assignments work is he'll give us reference images, specific subject matter to work with. Mm -hmm. We have to come up with the composition, we have to render it and focus on whatever it is we're trying to focus on, you know, that week or that chapter. Um, right. But we can do whatever composition we want. We just have to have the same subject matter ideas in there. Mm. Gotcha. So. Yeah. Yeah, man, those both look great. Uh, Thanks, ben. Yeah. What about you, Morag? What are you working on today? Anything? No, you walked away. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should do that. I'm <laughs> done. I'm out. It's a bit noisy here today, so I put myself on mute. Oh, uh, okay. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working just on, um, actually, digitally, doing a little tattoo design. Probably not something that I'll do, but everyone else is too lazy to do... Um, consultations and artwork for people during the lockdown so uh, it's yeah. a mandala flower type hit piece you know with the usual um beads hanging off it you know uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, do, you, do you have a is it do you have, is it you know, you're, you're not drawing digitally very much you're just on paper where do you have it nearby no. it's uh it's a mess at the moment because uh, okay. i'm still working everything out but you see the i'm oh, trying yeah. to insert a sithel now because yeah. I forgot the thistle, so I had it all done, and then she's like, oh, yeah, but the thistle, and I was like, oh, yeah, so I've yeah, got to I get back to that. her on that, yeah. yeah. I hate it when that happens. You're like, but yeah. it looks so good already. How about we just do it yeah. <laughs> Now I'm going to ruin it by trying to squeeze the thistle in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Now, yeah. what about you, Jake? Uh, I'm, um, I started a piece last uh last week that how much do I can see here it looks like I'm zoomed in kind of weird let me drop this thing let me see what did I do here uh, I started this piece last week uh here I'm just gonna zoom around on it so you can uh, zoom it out so you can see uh oops, wrong way wrong way uh, I started a piece and it didn't sit exactly like I had hoped so it's this like uh uh, the idea is um, th th it's on a doctor it's full sleeve and uh, this is I forget the main figure's name, uh, but he's the, uh, the Greek father of medicine. And so originally he wanted the Greek father of medicine and like a Trojan warrior. He wanted some water and he wanted like the Acropolis or some architecture. Uh, and so I've been trying, uh, that we've talked about before, I've been trying to create um, stories, like I, at least for myself, instead of just like collaging a bunch of stuff that the person likes, I'm trying to create a narrative because I want to become yeah. a better kind of storyteller in my, in my tattoos. I'm, I'm just trying to be Steve Moore. That's all it is. But I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, right. But I. Um, uh, so so I was like, well, you know, maybe you know, maybe it's more of like a uh, instead of a Trojan warrior, maybe there's a battle, and uh, and then uh, th this father of uh, medicine is kind of uh, protecting them or overseeing them. And initially, we were. What do you call the caduceus? Is that what it's called? Like the 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 yeah. symbol of medicine? You know. Yes. Originally, in his hand, which his hand wraps around. Oh, uh, I just have brought in. A, I don't have my full all my layers here. I drew it in and I drew it in uh, Procreate, and I just pulled the flat image over to Photoshop. Uh, so I don't have all my layers that show how it actually sits. But but basically, um, you know, the, the the main figure here, the father of medicine, is on the outer arm, and then his hand sits perfectly on the inner bicep. And originally, I had it holding a caduceus, and I didn't uh, I didn't really like it. It just looked it looked like a bit. It, for one thing, he. He has a Greek flag, sorry, I'm jumping around. He has a Greek flag that I'm covering in the hair of the main figure, but he wanted to reintroduce the Greek flag somewhere. So I put it uh, in, the, in the hand of this guy down kind of uh, low over here. Yeah. And so then I had two symbols on the inner arm. I had the Greek flag and the caduceus. And I was like, I don't really like that. 
So I ended up scrapping the, the caduceus, but then his hand was just out there and I was like, well, maybe he's just like, he should be protecting them somehow. So I couldn't think of what to do. So I, I pulled the water in a way where it's like this raging kind of flood that's, that's, that's destroying this architecture. But then as it passes through his hand, um, it, it's like he's, he's stopping the flow of water and it, it becomes a trickle. And then he kind of is guiding it around the, you know, the warriors. So it's not like, you know, it's not crushing them. Flooding them. That's cool. And so, so I was like, all right, maybe that's a cool way to do it. But then I thought I had it measured out perfectly, but you can see if I pull, if I get this out of the way, oh, nope, if I get uh, this out of the way, you can see I had to make a tracing of his arm, the square being his elbow. And this is the back of his arm and kind of the open space that I ended up with. I thought this, his sleeve coming down, the main figure sleeve coming down was going to be enough to uh, like see the sleeve. I thought the sleeve right here was going to be enough to uh, to kind of like work there, but it's just too much. I need something else. I also couldn't tell exactly how far some of these other guys were going to wrap around you know, the backside of his arm. Um, even though I'd taken the tracing for it, I thought I'd mapped it out pretty well, but it, it turned out that I had this open space. So at the end of the tattoo, I basically just wrapped this plastic wrap around him, traced out the negative space, took a picture of it, and now I'm going to figure out what to add in there to like make that connection. I wonder if you could superimpose like the caduceus, like a, a form of the caduceus in that area. You know I, I mean? thought about that. Yeah. I, I thought about maybe ghosting it into his sleeve somehow. Like, yeah, I don't know, exactly. you know, in, in that's folds. What I was thinking. Yep. Yeah, that, that might be cool. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Another element that I kept trying to pull into it and I couldn't is I wanted this like flat graphic, almost fan kind of shape of, um, of either spears or swords that was like a negative. I was trying to pull it off of his wrist coming up, but I just yeah. couldn't make it work. There was too much stuff happening. So I may yeah. try to pull that back there somewhere too. I don't know why I wanted that. I just, I got it in my head that it would be cool. Uh, and so I, I may try to pull that off too. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but I definitely have room for something. I, I think you're probably right. Uh, the yeah. This is probably the way to go. But, um, yeah. I mean, either way you could do the swords and stuff like that, but you'd have to kind of use some cash shadow. Like if you did the negative that superimposed the swords and stuff, you could do the cash shadow from behind a seam in that bottom part of the sleeve where it meets that Roman, that Trojan's hand with the sword, you know what I mean? Right, right, and, yeah. And, you know, and like when you look at like, um, let's see, like the a field of what, like wheat or something like that, the way it waves, the way mm -hmm. it, you'll see like a cash shadow that kind of gives way for that next segment of light to hit above it. It's almost like a wave in itself, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah that, might, that might be kind of neat to see yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It might be, yeah. yeah. And you can play with the negative and the positive form and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a great idea. Cool drawing, dude. Yeah. I like, yeah. I like yeah, the, cool. yeah, the story approach is awesome. The narrative, Thanks. like the, the illustrative kind of feel great, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do that uh, more and more. Uh, I really want to get to a point where I'm uh, doing like, uh, like Teresa Sharp does and just kind of creating my own stories, my own pieces, and then trying to sell those pieces. I don't think it would be hard to do. It's just making the time to actually do really great large scale drawings and put them out there, you know, to, mm -hmm. to sell uh, those tattoos. Not, not to keep plugging the uh, drunk critique, huh? but uh, there was a drunk critique that we did with illustrators. Yeah. So yeah. it was uh, Rebecca Guay and Dan Dos Santos. There are a lot of uh, illustrator masterclass types. And it was unbelievable. It was so cool to see the difference in the flavor of critiques. You know, I've listened to obviously, you know, uh, thousands of tattoo critiques, right? And they're all, you know, from different people, but they're all fairly similar. And I mean, and I'm sure these critiques in the illustrator world are the same, but they were definitely very much like what story is being told, priority. What's, wait, it looks like you have competing priorities. You know, what's this, you know, what, no, exactly. No, wait, if that's the story that's being told, why are they looking in this direction and not the other direction? Why is their hand facing forward, not backwards? You know, right. all of, every little part of the storyline and the priority were the, uh, you know, and then of course there was technical details and, and contrast or and et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. But they're all illustrators, right? So they're all doing sci-fi covers and, and whatnot. So it was, that was really right. cool. We got to get that replay up some, somewhere along the line. Some yeah, of these drunk critiques, so, sometimes the magic, you just got to catch while it happens. Yeah. Got to be there. That, man. That's where I think it's really valuable. And this is a, a discussion probably not for, you know, to, 
for a morning drawing group. But that's why I think it's really valuable, Gabe, for, for us to have someone that, that, that is spending time editing all the time and really just pulling the nuggets out. Even these morning sessions, you know, even just pulling little pieces out of them that are super valuable and, and putting them out separately as five minute clips or 10 minute clips. Absolutely. Think- well, check this out. This is what we're going to start today. We have a, a question in from the chat about uh, setups, about camera setups. So I'm actually going to get my YouTube set up here and we're going to cue this a little bit and we're going to run through the best camera setup. And then I'm going to have that clip already done in YouTube within five minutes, like during the show, before the show is done, yeah. I'm going to have already highlighted that. And then the call out here to the people is if there's an apprentice type who, or a younger tattooer who wants to really learn YouTube for their own benefit, Uh, and can help like basically if we have somebody that's dedicated somebody that maybe even is already listening Mm -hmm. you know on youtube potentially if they could watch it in the background and then as the highlights kind of come through clip it out we could do this stuff in real time and as a Mm -hmm. i love editing you know i mean i don't love editing i hate editing so anything i can do to not edit would be great and it's just very time consuming yeah um ultimately uh so if we could just clip all this stuff out live, then all of a sudden we have the full shows and then we have the clips, you know, it doesn't take that much effort if we have somebody else that's dialed in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so later, uh, after we got a lot more arting done, uh, we can do some techie stuff and then uh, we could try it out. So we could do, we could prove that concept. And uh, cause I did it for, anyways, I, I said enough. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that would be great. If it, And I never used the YouTube like the editor built into YouTube, but as far as just clipping something out and tying something together, you know, copy and pasting stuff, um, I'm sure it's great for that, you know, and you can even add little overlays and, you know, uh, and cards to link to the full episodes or whatever. It seems like, uh, you know, I mean, look at Joe Rogan, that he does that. He'll have, of course he has, you know, tens of millions of people keeping up with him, but I mean, he clips those little five minute things out of his two hour podcasts. And, yeah, we uh, have uh, uh, an intern coming too. I think we have, I think we have two sources of interns so that we right. could just get, it's, it's, it's just a bit of help, you know, we the clips, you know, we're also, well, we don't, yeah, we don't, we, we gotta, we have a whole businessy thing that we can go over with that, with that. And, uh, cause we will, because we have it coming. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let's get back. Let's get back to drawing stuff then. Uh, what, what, uh, did I see someone else popped in? I may have missed it. Did someone else pop in that I didn't see? I mean, too many things. Over. Yeah, Eric. Eric, what's up, Eric, man? Uh, what are you uh, What are you working on today? Uh, I have a couple coming in today. I have this one for this morning. Uh, it's a life spoon, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, no, no. it's a what? A what spoon? What you call it? A life spoon, I think, life is what spoon. she wanted. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was actually working with this uh, Jason and uh, Guy on uh, Jason's drawing. Uh, guy, oh, yeah. he helped me figure it out the, the flow of it by uh, drawing me some flash. Um, and then uh, I sent it to the guy, and he doesn't like the Dragon Balls. So, uh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but I, he said uh, we can go ahead and put clouds in. I just didn't want too much dragon showing so um, yeah yeah but today later today i have this one is a, a cover up I'm, i gotta do i gotta put a name in a little bit probably right in there oh okay what do you how, how is that gonna let's see how's it gonna sit i can't tell exactly can you zoom in just uh, a little bit? yeah bring it in, but. so i'm thinking i'm gonna wind up probably hiding uh right in this busy section i'm gonna probably hide this in the busy section yeah. And then uh, this will probably pull your eye away a little more. It's yeah. a design that you really like. I just put in a Mandela in the background to kind of, you know, make it look a little, a little yeah. more artsy. But. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that'll be an interesting cover up. I, I, yeah. I have a, I have to do that spoon here in a little bit, in about 20 minutes. And then I have a, I have to go to a friend's funeral. And then I get to come back and do that. This, Oh, Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. I already hear that, man. Yeah. Kid I went to high school with, and then and then I actually, after that one, this afternoon, I have to do this one. Uh, so it's a long day. Yeah, yeah. 
if I had to do two mandalas, two geometric tattoos in one day, I'd just have to take the week off. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Eric, real quick, can you uh, turn your phone sideways or whatever you're beaming out from sideways so that the camera like fills up the screen? No, nope, um, nope, the, uh, the camera that you're broadcasting from. Yeah. My, what do you want me to do with that? If, oh, if you, down. if you could easily make it horizontal, then the camera will actually fill it, will fill up the screen. It's a How portrait mode. Like I'm one uh, of the ones that are interested in the whole cam thing. So uh, uh, it seems already like it might be more complex than uh, we should do. Is, right it a now. is it an iPhone that, or a phone that you're shooting through? Or is it an actual camera? No, it's not. It's a phone. Yeah, if you just turn it horizontally, like it's up and down. Uh, so you're in landscape or you're in portrait mode. If you just turn it horizontally, if you can, on the. Uh, 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 yeah, I don't think I can with this uh, okay. setup. Ah, don't worry yeah. about it. But for next time, if you can, it just it helps make... fill up the uh, the screen more. Well, I, mean, I, can, I can drop this down. And... Yeah, I can see it well. I, I can see yeah, it pretty no, well. It's, but... it's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, man, that's... Uh, Clearly, that's gonna be cool. Where where is this mandala going on the body? Uh, full arm. So, okay. both of them. Uh, it, it's a a couple, and the one girl wants this one, and then the other one wants the other one. Oh, okay, they're together. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. But no, normally I only do like one a day. Um, mm -hmm. but this one, uh, the spoon we just got into. Um, cause I didn't have anything in the next few weeks. So, um, I, d I didn't really want to do this, but I tattoo her husband and this will be her first tattoo. She's been scared. So hmm. where is that going on her? Probably her forearm. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best forearm, but... yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I might try to like, I'll center it and run it up the back of it instead of so it's not so much down in like the middle of her arm, maybe more down the side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, that's that's the that's the day's work, and then uh, I don't even know what else. Oh, I got some uh, music stuff that actually I'm having a hard time getting it to flow. It's this um, on the arm. Yeah. Uh, he's got an existing upper part. Um, so this will this will uh, go underneath that, bring it into this. Um, uh, just a microphone guitar. I got to rechange guitar. He wants a, a fifty-three wood grain Stratocaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not specific at all. Right. No. Not, well, it was his father's guitar, so uh -huh. I actually told him to bring it in. So maybe after we can jam or something, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that stuff, it, wrapping music, uh, around the body part, it's been, it's something I've tried to do a hundred times and I, I never, it never it. looks good. No. Yep. I, no. I agree, but that's what he's asking. So yeah. I'm not, a. well, that in the inside, uh, I'm actually pretty much done for the day. I thought I'd just log on to watch you guys mostly, but, uh, I have, a. he wants this on the inside of his arm. Oh wow! Okay. So, so it wait, actually go full breadth. Yeah. So how much space is? Are, are these separate tattoos that are separated by existing stuff <laughs> on his body? Or? No, he has a full open skin lower half. Uh, okay. So, um, I just have these two, and the guy thankfully is like six foot five, so he's oh, a man. yeah, he's a really big guy. So he's a lot of real estate. So, yeah, um, I don't yeah. have to like cram anything but it, but if it does get too busy i'm not even gonna bother with it i'll, I'll tell him to I'll, actually i probably should have him come in for another orientation for his appointment just to, for fitting and stuff yeah i, I was gonna ask because I, I i wonder why you drew those why they're uh two separate pieces like why you drew them as two if they're if they're all going to work together do you ever like map the whole body out and try to figure out a way for all the shapes to you know what i mean to like work together um you know I, it's hard for me to actually draw on a front portion of an arm um, because always connecting it in the back. Um, so I always do two pieces in the, um, and then I, I actually draw the rest in while it, when it's on there to fit the, the two pieces together. Yeah. Um, I, have a, I have a harder time with digital wise um, getting them to, to meet up. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. I like that, uh, the draw, like the, 
I'll probably wind up drawing the, the music note line. So it, cause like you said, it's putting a stencil on an arm, having it trying to wrap, it never looks good. So drawing it makes it flow a little better. Yeah. But that's yeah. just all rough. Most of the time, if I can get away with it, if people let me, I'll draw on them. I, I prefer that. To be honest with you. Me, me too. Me too. I, I feel like I can always make it sit better, especially if it's something, yeah. you know, that I know I can draw with, with Sharpies on the skin and it doesn't have a lot of requirements that, you know, that I have to sit and noodle a lot. I, um, I haven't changed my approach slightly uh, since working, since going through this advanced sleeve design uh, or presenting this advanced sleeve design workshop that, uh, that Andy Chambers and I did a couple of months back. Uh, I've started, I used to just photograph the body all the way around and then line up the photos and, and draw, you know, uh, you know, the outer arm and, and then kind of uh, visualize the transition to the front of the arm and then to the inside of the arm. And I would just kind of sketch one photo into the next. Uh, and I still like that, except for, um, he got me going back and remapping the body like we used to before digital drawing, which is like a roll of tracing paper for a sleeve, for example, and, and identifying all the landmarks. And the main reason, and so what, what I've been doing is I'll do my initial sketch of the way that I have been on the photos that I took of the person just to kind of like block in and figure out how everything sits. Then um, I'll actually uh, print all of those photos out or the, you know, the layers that have the drawing, not the layers of the actual photo, but you know, I'm drawing on a separate layer. I'll print all those out to scale because I've got the full size drawing of the person and I'll lay them under that full size drawing and start repositioning them, moving them around where they sit, uh, where I want, where the main pieces sit, where I want them on the actual tracing that I took of the person's arm. And then I'll draw it, you know, uh, uh, with pencil or right on top of the, you know, on the tracing paper. <laughs> then I rephotograph that and go in and do my final line drawing in the iPad just because I draw a lot in the iPad. I could, I guess, just do all of it right, finish it on the tracing paper, but, but something about getting it scale uh, helps me to see just how big stuff actually is. And if something doesn't, you know, if things aren't going to overlap right or if something's not going to sit the way that I want, um, I, uh, I, I can tell it easier that way. Or if I have too much detail in too small of an area, it's easier for me to see when it's blown up to scale uh, rather than drawing it on an iPad. And then I just assume that, oh, by the time I blow it up, it's going to be big enough. It's small on the iPad, but, it, you know, whenever I blow it up, it's going to be big enough. This lets me know that for sure. And then the other thing it helps me with is... Um, uh, seeing how things are going to sit as they, uh, as they transition around the body. So one thing that Andy focuses a lot on is the uh, perspective of the piece. Like, you know, if, if you've got like a horizon, it, the, the perspective of the actual tattoo versus the vantage point of the viewer. And it can get a little bit complex sounding, but, but once you lay it out, it, uh, it, 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 it solves a lot of problems for you. So like how people typically view an outer arm versus an inner arm, you know, uh, uh, you know, if, if, um, if, you know, if someone's looking at the outer arm, it's hard to do, you know, they're kind of looking at it this way. And then when they're looking at the inner arm, they're looking at it this way. So really, if you, if you drew, taking into consideration the vantage point of the viewer and then you flatten that drawing out, it might not look right. You know what I mean? Because you'd be looking at this vantage point this way and this vantage point this way. And when you flatten them out, it might look kind of wonky, but, it, but in the round, it actually worked perfectly. Uh, and the, and uh, I, um, Watching some of these really high level illustrative style tattooers who are doing like this visual storytelling and stuff like that. I see that that's kind of the stuff that, that, that's separating them from people who are just doing what, what I've always done and what it sounds like you do, where we're just kind of like, eh, I know I want this piece here. I know I want this piece here. And then I'll just draw to connect it. Um, the, the kind of prep work that they're putting in to, to visualizing how it's actually going to sit on the body on the front end really is making a huge difference, I think. So that's actually um Agreed. that's actually something that I went over with a couple of guys from the RIT group and and my method of uh sleeve layout. Um and I've got it down to like you know pretty much a, a standard method for how I lay everything out. I'll mm -hmm. give you an example as far as uh you know just the way that I personally do things. You know, not that I'm on like indie chambers kind of level or anything like that, but me um, neither, man. Let's see, where was the one example that I used? Pretty rocking too, Jason. Really good. Yeah, it, it was just, you know, it's it's been my methodology for a while. So this is actually a full sleeve I did, and I'll go through and hide all the layers oh, yeah. and whatnot that I have in here. Yeah, I love that layout. It was great. But um, 
So I essentially start off and I'll, I'll go through and measure the whole arm, right? I'll, I'll take a, a flexible measuring tape, a tailor's measure, and I'll measure, you know, uh, actually, let's pull up a new layer. So I'll actually measure maximum height, top and bottom, you know, on the outside of the arm. And I know this one was going on the guy's left arm. So I don't really have to think about that all too much because I know that all of my direction is going to be focused in this way. Um, I'll go through and measure it widthwise all the way around, plot that out in Procreate by using the, uh, the assisted drawing guide. And then, um, and then that way I know the maximum limits to where everything goes, right? Because that's the circumference of the arm. Mm -hmm. Well, the way that I ended up doing this, uh, let's see, where did I put those layers? I hate it when I lose layers. I think there was one more that I had. So I, one thing I always try to remember is like where my muscle structures are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'll make sure that I remember that, hey, where everyone's arm kind of scrunches in at the sides, that's going to be my elbow spot, right? So I know that whole area right there, I know I'm going to have the knot of the elbow, like the actual elbow bone right around here, because that usually lines up pretty parallel with the interior right by where the armpit is. Um, so I know the corresponding area is going to be the ditch of the elbow, not a very fun spot, obviously that's going to be over in this area, you know, outer upper arm plane is going to be in this spot, you know, and then you always want to try to focus a little bit on that inner arm area, just like Andy Chambers was mentioning. So I always try to put something nice and flowing, like a nice flowing, uh, you know, shape over in that area so that as they turn their arm, you have, uh, complementary subject matter as well, so that no matter what way you view it from, it's going to be an interesting composition. I always try to go beyond those bounds because I know that if I go past this spot, that's going to come in past this spot on this side, kind of fill up that space. Right. So I always try to leave a little bit of negative space. In this case, I just added some quick wind bars in there. Um, and it, it wraps around so that there's interesting subject matter in all locations, everything looks nice and cohesive, but you have to remember that, you know, if anything goes outside these lines, that's when it starts to come back in over on this side, you know, and maybe it'll overlap. Maybe you tuck it behind an element. Maybe you tuck it behind a subject matter. In this case with the rocks, these waves lined up perfectly, crashing out from behind the rocks. That continues this forward motion um, like I said, over here, I think I had like maybe an inch worth of space in between the dragon body on each side, just kind of threw some wind bars or some wave bars in there. But otherwise I hit all the major muscle groups, your deltoid, your tricep, your bicep area, um, you know, all those nice intricate forearm muscles, and then having these coming through and crashing up on the back of the arm while still avoiding, you know, your elbow bone which no one likes getting tattooed that I know of. Um, and there's not going to be too much complicated stuff on the inside of the elbow here. So like I said, it's just kind of my method on going through and doing it so that that way everything lays out nice and cohesively. And I don't have to spend my time, you know, drawing on the client. They can come in, I can print it out to scale, stencil it, tape it together and start tattooing. Yeah, 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 I like that. It's, you're hitting all the main uh kind of landmarks uh and where everything is i'm trying to draw up a loud a little something here that's that's similar but but using kind of a generic uh a generic uh tracing that would be basically the same thing uh let me pull let me change mine yeah that that hits all of the all the major landmarks the what the one uh other consideration that that andy brought up to me let me see if i can go back to this okay is um let's just slightly so everybody can see uh there we go um all right so let's say this is this is a, a left arm can you, you can see my pointer um yep yep all right so uh same idea if this were just saying uh, this isn't proportional but it's just a quick generic kind of uh tracing 
if this is a left arm, you know, right, right up here, I've got basically the top of the shoulder, uh, right, right. You know, the little point of the shoulder. Uh, I always kind of lay out a square for the elbow and a plus for the ditch. Uh, and then a little circle that shows just how much of that elbow skin is elbow skin. You know what I mean? Around the, around the elbow, it's like the whole kind of elbow area. And then down here are the bones at the end of the finger and something that uh, are the, at the end of the hand, these little kind of wrist bones, right? Down the bottom. Right, right. And something that Andy pointed out is, let me switch back to my other camera view oh, for a second, uh, is, um, uh, there we go. So something that Andy pointed out is if you, if you went from like the, I, I, I don't know if I showed the notches of the, of the you saw the two little, um, uh, these yeah, two little guys. Ones. These little guys right here are basically the front and back of the armpit. So if right. you went from the front of the armpit uh, to the ditch and then the ditch to this bone, it's basically a straight line. It's pretty right. well a straight line. And then you can say the same thing about the back of the armpit to the elbow to this bone. It's basically a straight line. So, uh, and, and those, are, they might be slightly different from person to person. This inner uh, little notch right here, that's the dead center of the armpit on the inside. So that's the middle of the, of the armpit. So you kind of draw a little wedge shape there. And, and to his point, the reason that he does it this way is not only the, the importance of, of, the, of these lines isn't just that they, you know, that, that they line up and that they hit these landmarks, but it's also where the tattoo breaks the line of sight. So right. if, if, you know, really this area back here is kind of the, um, it, it, it's like a little flat that's, that's pretty useless. It's, it's almost never seen unless you yeah. do this kind of stuff. And so uh, one reason, the reason he does these little like notches like this is to, as a reminder of whatever is going out here is doing this here. So it's like, right. that's, the, that's the interlocking piece. And so it's yeah. just these little things are kind of like reminders for that. And so like, if, for example, if you're drawing like, you know, a, 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 you know maybe a snake head or something like that, and the head sits right on the front of the arm, you might want to draw it in a way where it changes direction where this, you know, where the eye here is right at that, uh, at where it breaks a lot of sight and then it's, and then the head's going back on the other side. So that it, you're using the, you're using the natural contours of the body to relate to the, uh, you know, to the shape that you're trying to create. So that you're like, it's so that your body, the body is lending itself to the, uh, to the actual shape of the object that you're, that you're trying to represent. Does that make no, that's sense? sense. That makes perfect sense, dude. And like, not only does that line from the armpit from the front and in the back line up, it like one of the things that I've always done is draw a straight line across it too. Mm, you know what yeah. I mean? You can kind of start breaking down these like inner, inner, um, intersecting lines that kind of would angle down through the whole cohesive piece mm. that are underli underlying like uh, construction for the, the image. You know what I mean? And, and then that line also tapers down to the wrist that like you're talking about. It does go straight, but there's always that little taper and almost like a wave right, mm -hmm. that tricep and bicep area too. And then yeah. the, the other thing that I'll do is I'll circle the, the ditch as well. And then the armpit or the elbow and I make a like a cross line to kind of intersect to show like where it, where it is, where it does angle and the way it wraps around too. You know, and that's like a lot better. Um, I've always tried to draw like a bigger tattoos without the tracing and you can tell how how it's going to be off you know what i mean like a chest panel and a, and a half sleeve like like this one mm, like if, yeah. if you know, like if you were actually trying to lay that down on somebody without the tracing you can tell like how far over this forehead and that horn is actually going to be on the chest like it, it would be so far forward on the front of the shoulder that it wouldn't look right you know what i mean like mm -hmm. if you were to actually lay it down like that so those tracings help out a lot dude and like you and Jason both are like spot on with all that stuff too. That the yeah. little markers, the little markers for the landmarks and everything like that are, are crucial. It's almost like a mile marker. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Super valuable. Yeah. Yep. Also, um, Jake, I, I don't know if you know this, but um, you know, for thumbnailing, because I know we all like to do little thumbnails. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, there's a couple of really great templates from this site called Fireside. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen those. <laughs> you know, I, I, I use those quite a bit. So. Oh, sweet. Yeah, man. I, I still use those a lot too. I pull them in and use them on the iPad. I've also um, used, uh, uh, been using the, uh, I forget the name of the set, Protoplast from, uh, from yeah. Procreate. That Protoplast set's pretty cool for that too. It's more rendered, you know, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, man, I use the hell out of those 
thumbnails, uh, especially when I have no idea what I want uh, the piece to look like. I just start blocking in light and shadow shapes that seem like, that, that look like something that I haven't done recently. I guess that's all that I'm normally thinking about. Just like, what have I not like, because if I start thinking about how I want to lay an object out, I'll start to put stuff in predictable places just out of habit. But if I just start to block in like dark and light shapes without real consideration for what it's going to be, I'll start to find cool little, uh, you know, cool little things happening that I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I could turn that into a tiger. Maybe that shape could be a tiger head or a claw or whatever. And then it, it starts super abstract. Uh, what's his name? You, uh, Gabe, you were talking about Brad Wooten earlier. One thing that when I was doing the show with him, uh, he'll he'll take his brush, his stamp sets and like drop a single stamp down and then he'll blow it up over a body as like a mask and twist it and turn it different ways. And he's doing it as like a finished piece basically because he does these big abstract simple shapes you know, that sweep across bodies. But I was looking at it and the whole time thinking like, oh, that's a really cool way to find some compositions accidentally, you know, without having to draw them. You could just start like dropping those brush sets down, blowing them up, warping them, using the liquify tool, scooting them around and seeing like what, you know, what kind of dark and light shape combinations look unique or interesting. Yeah, it sounds like it would make it like really organic and kind of surprise yourself with it. And, and then that, it can kind of like inspire you to do different drawings and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I first, it saw that, uh, I didn't record it, but I want to say maybe there's some recording on YouTube of it. But I, when I took the workshop from Casey Ball years ago, he does that when he first lays out, I mean, he's, he's doing portrait painting and it's realistic. But when he first is trying to place his subject in a, you know, a, on the canvas, um, he just connects all the shadow shapes like, and just tries to see if that abstract black and white shape looks interesting. Uh, and I can't remember now if he does that on the canvas or if he was doing that digitally as just a, as a mock-up, just trying to like completely, you know, like if the background's dark here and her hair's dark and this side of her face is dark, then 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 this whole chunk is dark is black, and then all this is white. And he's like, does that does that look balanced to me or does that look interesting to me? And uh, I started trying to pull that into into tattooing, uh, but yeah. My time is getting close to being up. Gabe, did you say there's something else you wanted to go over? Or... Are you here? We lost him. Gabe is everywhere. <laughs> he is everywhere. Jake, except for um, except for right here with us. <laughs> I know, Jake, right? You, you're leaving. Um, Jason, if you're going to be sticking around, can you uh, uh, ask Gabe to post? And because um, he said something about I'm I'm trying to get more, um, being a little more videoed. Um, like I went out, and I bought an M50 camera. Um, I just bought some lenses and I'm trying to, um, I just actually, I went to the workshop and made my own articulating arms and everything, um, for the shop. So I'm trying to get more into it, but there's a, still a lot I don't know. And so if you could have Gabe, if, if it's something he was going to be posting on this episode, um, or this cast or, or somewhere else in there. Um, can you have them like PM me or something? Because I actually my tattoos just pulled in. So uh, yeah, yeah, I can no also um, I, I can I can shoot a couple of links to uh, to YouTubers who I've completely stole their setups for our podcasting stuff. Uh, I've been down the rabbit hole on that too, and there are a handful of really good videos that uh, that are Ooh. showing people's different setups for like you know yeah. overhead shots and all that. So, well, yeah. Jason's worked with me a little bit on um, like the webcasting and um, mm -hmm. having. Um, I forgot the program he told me to get. Um, mini cam. Yeah, the mini cam. So I can actually do a multi, um, kind of like what he's got going on up there, which I'm kind of interested in doing as well. Yeah, um, yeah. you can do that with OBS uh, or mini cam. Uh, it seems yeah. like there are a handful of them. I, I, I got both of them and I've kind of been using them back and forth. Uh, there's also a, a, a pretty cool one if you're doing all Apple stuff that's just called... Um, Oh man, now I'm drawing a blank of it. Uh, Lonely Screen, uh, uh, Lonely Screen, and it's I think it's free. But uh, when I updated to the latest version of uh, the OS, like Big Sur, Lonely Screen hasn't updated to work with that one yet, so I lost it. But uh, it's like super simple, and it, it doesn't seem to have any glitches that I can tell. Cool. All right, everyone. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off of here, and go to the gym, and then I'm gonna uh, get this workday going. But good to see you all. Everyone's Good to see you, awesome. man. Oh, yeah. Jake. Jake.
What did yes. you get tattooed last week? Oh, oh I got my entire uh, uh, drop so, trail. What's that? Drop trail. <laughs> yeah, I uh, my, my butt is peely. I got my uh, in, uh, my back has already been worked on, but Andy Chambers is working from my neck. What was supposed to go from my neck to my to the back of my knees, but we ended up pulling it down to my ankle. Uh, oh my so God. we worked, yeah. So we worked from basically my waistline down. So uh, a nice. lot of like, yeah, a lot of bend of the knee, uh, you know, and a lot of uh, boy, there's some tender areas back there, right at the base where your leg meets your butt cheek is miserable. Oh. What a terrible spot <laughs> to get tattooed. Yep, I yep. have heard that is the worst. It's so uh, bad. Just, like hands, hands across. It seems like everyone's got some disagreement about the second worst spot. Yeah. But yeah, the this, this seam from butt to leg, I'm, I'm, I have missed it so far, but I'm, I'm headed there. Ooh. Hey, so uh, I'm going to be sending you a link to the sleeve tattoo design tactics from Jake Meeks, Jason Lesser, and Ricardo. Oh, sweet. Look oh, at that. Right on, man. Nice. That and, uh, I think that uh, we will see that... We desperately need an intern or an apprentice who just wants to watch all these and then clip them out for us. Because if I was able to do just this kind of a job here, mm -hmm. um, if somebody was you know somewhat dedicated to doing it, uh, that would be amazing. But anyways, I'll yeah. send you the link and uh, you'll, you'll see what, you know what we're able to accomplish um, awesome. with the YouTube, and uh, we'll go from there. Have, have fun! Thanks again, as cool. always. And uh, yeah, thanks yeah, everyone. See you guys. Yeah, yeah take and everyone should definitely be uh, next week. Hmm. Should definitely be what? Go ahead. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll plug you when you when you leave so you don't have to oh, blush. Okay. <laughs> cool. Thanks. All right. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know that the uh, Fireside Tattoo Network does have a um, coupon code for reinventing the tattoo. So uh, if you go to course, let's see, you go to reinventingthetattoo.com slash fireside. And then it'll take you to the right page. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that, that works. And um, yeah, Jake's awesome. And is, uh, you should definitely be subscribing to his podcast and to his YouTube channel. Um, Gabe. Yeah. So. Eric had to jump off, but he did mention something about um, sending him a DM about, you know, different camera setups and studio setups and things. Oh, like yeah. That. Do you want to uh, set up a. Um, should we do like, do you want to set up a, we could set up where I can clip out the same thing that we just clipped out for the sleeve design. So like basically we intentionally, mm -hmm. I, I just need to have like some sort of visual cue and then we. Uh, run through the demo like if you did like you kind of did before but maybe oh adios uh Marek. um but if you just go a little bit slower and we can make it like a real intention like a, i mean i don't know if you're, you're set up now but if we could do a little video tour of what it takes or what you have set up that would be pretty cool yeah not a problem i mean my area is a little bit messy but you know it doesn't yeah. bother me um, okay. Let me just pull this down. So, um, and then Ric Ricardo, what do you have set up? Is it worth going for your setup too? Not your headphone setup, but your camera setup, or you just have a regular webcam uh, or a phone? Yeah, I'm just using my phone right now. I'm, I'm looking into getting some stuff, though, so I'm really interested in checking some of these links out. So, yeah, cool. so yeah. for now it's just my cell phone. I got a ring light. I can turn it on and be all fancy. Uh, woo oh, that blast! <laughs> yeah, blinding. That's about it so far. We're close with, uh, I'm pretty, we got to get Guy some good toys. We got to get him like just a dedicated setup. And uh, yeah. we're getting pretty, we're getting pretty close to, uh, mostly it's just a matter of time and logistics. But so Jason, when you're all set, then uh, I'll, uh, I'll put myself on just to ask the question and then I'll spotlight you. Cool. I was going to throw my little ring light up. Yeah, do, the, do uh, it. Let me turn the light on. We're not in a rush. Cool. So I don't know if I'm going to be all washed out now. Yeah, that's going to be a little too warm. Let's turn this on real quick. Hey, Bruno says, uh, great tips on how to approach a full sleeve layout. Yeah, I, um, so I mentioned this in, uh, I think it was Monday Night Strong Group. But um, I got together with uh, Ricardo and Bruno last Wednesday. Um, in the evening and kind of went through like 
how I would measure everything and all that stuff and how I would set up to lay it all out in Procreate and like the little tricks that I use to be able to print it out to scale. And uh-huh. uh, I just didn't bother to record it because I didn't know that anyone else would be interested in it. So I'm actually planning on going back through and doing that again, maybe Thursday night. Cool. Um, and uh, I'll actually record it this time and I'll stay on topic. Like, unlike I did last time. So. Nice. Oh man. So uh, if Kayla's still in the chat room, she says, I love the sleeve. And then she says, you guys are super impressive. I didn't realize how much goes into a tattoo way more than just straight lines, shading and good drawing. <laughs> so if, uh, yeah. if you're still in the uh, chat room, let us know what you want to get for a sleeve and where you're located. We might be able to point you in the right direction. Uh, let's see. Walter says, uh, hello from Argentina, uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, Kayla, oh, Kayla's in Chicago. So there's a whole mess of great uh, tattooers. What style are you looking for? I guess would be the next question. Uh, Elmrock, Montana, a couple other hellos. And uh, I'm going to, you're all set, uh, Jason? Whatever. Just about, to, yeah. Let me I'll read off a couple more here. Let's see. Uh, Gypsy Wade says, greetings from West Virginia. Jordan mm-hmm. Jones says, uh, hello from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Love fireside content. Thanks, Jake and company. Uh, always get something good to apply to my tattooing and get better from your content. Thank you. Uh, yes, Jake is awesome. And uh, we also love his content. We're really happy to have him here every uh, Monday morning. Um, Matt Harmon says, good morning, fellas. Uh, had a great time listening to everyone. Thanks. I was drawing with you all the whole time. Uh, Matt Bowen says, hello to Fireside team. I started following you guys on YouTube two weeks ago. New at drawing and tattooing. Thank you so much for all the work you guys are putting out, helping and inspiring. Uh, Cool. Let's see what else we got. Carolina Evans. It says, good morning. I'm listening while I do my physical therapy. (laughs) Um, So that's a good way to start the day doing your stretches. And she says, yes, being hypermobile, it's the foundation to an easier day. Uh, And so boringly repetitive. So thank you for the conversation. Yeah, we're uh, we're becoming people's uh, pretty soon will be the workout uh, uh, background. Let's see. Heck and then yeah. Kirsten uh, says, be sure to say where I could purchase your artwork too if you have some up. Trying to decorate my booth. So I guess before we leave, we want to make sure we sign off like so. Um, okay, that was the uh, that was a good round of talks. So I'm going to we'll get this party started with our uh, our tour. Cool. So. Um... Oh, hold on. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lead you off. Right. Oh, let me see. Let's see here. Visual cue. Okay. So a couple questions about the best ways or good ways, at least there's a wide variety of them to use your zoom and phone as an artist to join these uh, zoom art drawing groups and paint jams. So I'm going to spotlight Jason Leeser, and he's going to show us what he's got going on here. Cool. So I've, I've got kind of like the uh, non-professional budget set up for a kind of way to do it, I guess, quick and dirty. Um, but it still allows you all of the features so that you can kind of have some semblance of like what I have now. Um, and I'm going to go through and take my webcam and give you guys a kind of tour of what I have set up and how I've got it set up and all that stuff. Um, so, so I've got a, a dual display going. So I've got my, uh, my large Cintiq tablet, which I don't really use too much anymore. Ooh, but can you make your, uh, can you make your longer. camera big? Uh, Cause right now we see the, uh, the chair really big uh, yeah, and very yeah, tiny. Good point. Good point. Let's do this. There we go. So right now I've got my uh, my Cintiq, which I don't really use too much anymore. And if you guys are wondering what webcam I'm using, it's a little uh, sixty dollar Logitech C six fifteen or six twenty, I think. But I've got two of them because I was using one of these for the overhead for a little while. It's this little guy. Works great. Um, it's got uh, 1080p resolution. Uh, it's got a built-in microphone and it's actually way better than a lot of built-in microphones. Part of the reason why I grabbed it. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but, um, great little webcam to have. It also has a little tripod mount on the back of it. Very, very handy. And you're going to need something with a tripod mount. 
to kind of do overhead shots and stuff like that. Um, so moving along, I actually just as of like 1.30 last night, hooked up a digital SLR um, to use as my overhead camera. So that's, I, I had my old Canon laying around, which I hadn't touched in a few years. So I hooked that up. And um, this is a little like $20 desktop boom arm that I got. And it's actually threaded to, um, to secure onto digital cameras and webcams, microphones, all types of stuff like that. I think it was originally meant for a microphone, but it's threaded the same as a digital camera. Um, now, because of that, I had to add a little bit of weight to the stand itself just to keep it from toppling over. But I get much more clear of an image whenever I'm using that as opposed to a webcam. For the, oh, longest time I was using, for the longest time, I was using this webcam to point downwards. And I would just screw the base on to the, uh, the little arm, right? Screw it right in there. And then that way it was pointing down. And the way that I keep getting these dual display setups and whatnot, believe it or not, my little secret is that program there. It's called ManyCam. I don't know if it's going to focus right or not. Mm, almost. Uh, it's a, it, is it ManyCam.com? Yes. Yep, ManyCam. Uh, and it, I, I bought the annual license for it. I think it was 40 bucks. Um, and what that will do, just to give you a brief little tour, in fact, I'll share my screen. That'll make things a little bit easier. Let me put this back real quick. So you guys should be seeing my mini cam screen in just a second. Cool. So this is mini cam. Um, I really like this program because it allows you to integrate whatever video inputs you want. Um, and you can set up different screens for different shots. You can flip everything, you can zoom in, you can do brightness and contrast, saturation, adjust what frame speed you're broadcasting at, what resolution you're broadcasting at. You can add like lower thirds and everything like that. So if I wanted to do a flyover, boom, there's my flyover. Um, and you can take that off and you can customize everything. Let's uh, why, why don't you, do you want to just first go through the, the base setup? So you have like the two cameras. So you have the one yep. camera that's on you and then the other. And uh, maybe once we get through like the, the base of what artists can do to hook up then uh, talk about some of the bells and whistles. Cool. So I'm, I'm centralizing everything right off of my laptop and I've got a little dock here. Everything that I try to use, I try to make sure everything can be connected all at once. Um, so I've got like a little USB-C dock. Everything that I use is either HDMI, which is what this guy is. And then I've got a USB that goes right into the digital camera. Uh, my other USB webcam right there, that goes to the guy I'm actually holding right now. Um, and everything just gets plugged into the laptop and everything gets streamed out through that program. Yeah, so let's see. So if you could show us in ManyCam how to do the two cameras. Yep. So for that, that's actually uh, the easy part. Um, and I'm actually, so to go through, say I wanted to set up a new, say I wanted to customize this look right here, but I wanted to add another camera, right? I wanted to add my downward facing camera. Over here under presets, right? You can have different presets for what you want to do but you can also add video sources here. So if I wanted to add my downward camera, I would click the plus sign, webcam, and this picks up all different types of cameras. I could even hook my cell phone up and have the camera from my cell phone pointing down if I wanted to. Um, it's a great little nifty program. Um, from here, I would choose uh, EOS webcam utility, right? So now I have both here and here, okay? Um, from here, I could go through and I could say, all right, let's add, I think I just dragged it and dropped it before. Now that's preset one. Ah, 
So if you take whatever preset you have set up, you can add, you know, um, I think it's another layer. Where is it? No, that's virtual background. Uh, add new layer, right? So there's my new layer. And I can say cameras, EOS webcam, and now I have my EOS webcam pointing down. But in order to get it so that it doesn't really confuse me, I always flip that around and I'll flip it horizontally and then vertically. That way on the screen, it's as if you're sitting right in front of it. Now here's the cool thing, right? So you can go through, as long as you have your webcams plugged in correctly, you can switch them back and forth. So if I wanted to go through, once again, I'm gonna add this as a source, right? And I'm gonna add my web, my uh, Logitech webcam here as a source. Okay, now because I flipped that before, it's already set to be flipped. So I'm gonna reset that. So now I've got dual display, right? Or dual cameras in my feed. Now, say you wanted to add like a little Instagram tag or something like that. All you would have to do is go through on your preset um, and I do a two finger click or a right click and you can add all different types of stuff, images, videos. You can do, um, you can hook up an IP camera which is a network interface camera. Um, you can send layers forward or backwards at a PowerPoint, YouTube URL. So if I wanted to plug say, the reinventing the tattoo YouTube channel, I could throw that in there. Um, I could add my desktop and have that in there. So that could be, displayed all at the same time. Um, color sources, um, another network device interface output. Uh, so you can really go through and start to get super creative with all this stuff. You know, I could even add a third webcam in here if I wanted to uh, by once again, coming here, right click, camera, FaceTime. Okay, so there's my FaceTime camera. So I'm gonna switch that back to my EOS webcam. And if I wanna add a new layer, there's my empty layer, cameras, FaceTime. FaceTime's the built-in camera on a Mac, by the way. So now you're getting uh, way too many images of me at this point in time. Um, don't recommend that you look at me too much. You know, it's... Uh, this shot especially is not very flattering because you can see all the other crap that I have around me. But that's essentially how I would go about setting it up. From there, I always like to add, you know, a little moniker and um, boom, that's my standard setup. It's how I integrate everything is all through ManyCam. Um, when I'm done using ManyCam, right? Once I have everything set up, when I go to share a video source, in Zoom or in YouTube or anything like that, one of your choices for webcam that'll pop up is ManyCam. If you choose that as your video source whenever you're broadcasting, you'll have all of these presets already set up, already set and ready to go, so that all you have to do is go through and say, hmm, which layout do I wanna use? Do I wanna use this one? Do I wanna use this one? You know, which, which preset do I want to go full screen with this? Um, you know, if I cut over to here, I can get rid of the FaceTime camera. Say I want to get rid of my EOS webcam. Um, and so now I'm down to this guy only. We'll make that nice and big. So maybe I just want to do this as my, my only video source in this frame so that that way I've got one for this, I've got one for this, you know, I've got another one that I can play around with as an experimental, and then I've got my primary. And you can switch back and forth between those live, obviously, because if you're seeing my webcam, that's exactly what's happening. Um, Jason, I don't mean to interrupt, but I do have a question about this though. Like, uh, were you, are you able to cast onto another monitor if you wanted to? Do you have to hook that up manually? with an HDMI cord, or would you be able to use another app to kind of like cast onto, let's say a television screen? So like, that you know, would all depend, 
that would all depend. So yes, I could broadcast out from my laptop straight to another screen. Uh-huh. That would re- that would basically just be setting it up as a secondary display. Yeah, there you um, go. Okay, that's cool. kind of what I'm using my Wacom for now. Okay, gotcha. All right, cool. Yeah. Cool. And I even Thank have you. like another tiny little screen over here that I could hook up if I didn't want to have the big Wacom. But yeah. I always like having the versatility to switch over to that if I want to say annotate and zoom or, you know, want to show something or show someone something in Photoshop where I've got to do some drawing. Well, I can show mm-hmm. that to them and it's already hooked up and calibrated and ready to go. Um, so nice. I always like having that ability. Awesome. But, hey, that, that was awesome. If, uh, if you're interested in hearing more uh, from Jason about all of these different tricks, then you can click on one of these links to check out the drawing group that's hosted by Jason every Sunday at one o'clock. And uh, definitely click the other one that is the subscribe button. And then this will be the end of the highlight. So I'm going to know that because I'm going back to gallery. And then when I click over here, I'm going to uh, make that a highlight. We'll see. Excellent. Hey. Please. So uh, if you guys want to stay, do, what, what, what's your uh, time like? Do you want to stay on for another 10, 15 minutes? You, you guys want to boogie? I, mean, I actually got to get I'm going. I'm literally drawing all day long. Yeah. So I've got nothing else to do but draw. I, I have a dude I made coming sure in I took at 10 a.m. Everything yesterday. You got to get coming. Okay, well, why don't we uh, do another eight minutes? I'll make this uh, uh, highlight and then uh, we'll close it up. Yeah. Cool. What are you working on today, Ricardo? I'm going to be doing this eagle. Uh, well, actually, this, this gentleman that I tattooed before working on the sleeve, um, he is going to get a, mem- a memorial for his grandfather. He was in the Navy. Uh, so I'm going to do like kind of like a play on the, the eagle and the chevrons for the, um, the naval symbols and then uh, kind of include his, uh, his rank and, and everything like that in it with the dog tag. So pretty nice. cool. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. He's an awesome dude. Like he'll let me kind of just take the vision and run with it too, man. So it's a lot of fun. You know what I mean? And he really enjoys that energy that, that comes across that way. Yeah. Cause we talked about that multiple times, you know, and there's an energy, there's a different kind of flow that kind of happens between the two people. Once somebody comes in, they dig your art already. And they're like, dude, just go for it, man. I'm like, sweet. That rules. Yeah, it's like, Jesus. Hey, I trust you do your thing and I'm going to be happy with it. And that, yeah, that means the world to tattooers. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, giving us the freedom fun. to really um, to really expand and really do some cool stuff, but yeah. you know, still sticking with an idea that you give us. So, mm-hmm. and within the parameters, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's, you, you know me. That's always been my thing. It's like you can tell me to do whatever I want, but I'm going to mm-hmm. ask you to give me a direction to head in. Right. Yes. Because yes. without that direction to head in. <laughs> I could spitball ideas at you all day long and never come up with anything that you like. Right. Or so, you're going to get some crazy stuff on you, bro. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, and uh, there are not a whole lot of people out there that really enjoy going for the, yeah, I want something crazy kind of thing. So. Yeah, exactly, man. Yep. So I'm pretty excited about it. It'll be a good one. It'll be a good day today. I'll try to, uh, I always say this and I never really get a chance to post the pictures afterwards, but I'll definitely do my best to try to get a picture of it today and send it off to you guys. Just, I'm, I'm working on my camera setup still, you know what I mean? Um, I'm looking into getting one of the, the uh, nicer cameras uh, and um, I'm always catching glares on a lot of the fresh work that I do. So I'm, I always hesitate about posting it because I want it to be as, 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 as close to as in person as you can get without a whole bunch of filters and stuff on it, you know what I mean? So, um, so I'm so working on that. Doing- one thing that I've always found to be a, um, a great way to take better photos and even mm-hmm. live stream video, if you can find a way to do it, mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're working with polarized light, okay. uh, it's far easier to eliminate glare. Okay. Um, you get, uh, you, and you can buy them on Amazon. It's like a little piece of polarized film. Okay. You throw that over top of your light, right? So that's going to polarize your light. Then you okay. can get like a little clip on a uh, CPL filter, or um, I think it's a CPL filter that's adjustable that you can adjust the angle of it. Mm-hmm. Use that. And that will eliminate any and all glare while still mm-hmm. maintaining the integrity of the image. Okay, cool. 
That's why you see that, a lot yeah. of these guys, and they've mm-hmm. got these beautiful color saturated, you know, like just gorgeous photos of their tattoos with no glare on them at all. And you're like, these guys have to be in a studio, right? No. Right. A lot of times they're just controlling their light. Just like in drawing, yep. you want to control your light. And as long as yep. you can control that, you can make it do whatever you want it to do. Killer, man. Thank you for that. I've been, I've been hearing that word polarized, you know, kind of scattered here and there through a lot of the, uh, the online forums and tattoo artists talking about it here and there and, and different sources and such. But cool. I, I've always wondered. So I'll definitely check that out. I'll get yeah, on that I can today. send you Amazon links to, um, to like what I use. Uh, yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I'm not the best at taking photos, but uh, Lord knows I don't really post a whole lot to begin with. Yeah, but, um, no, man, definitely, it, yo, definitely send me the is, link. That'd be great. I, and I can send you like before and afters on the exact same tattoo of like with the, the polarized lens and without it. Okay. But the secret is to polarize the light. Okay, killer. Without Dude, all that, right. yeah. it's not going to, you're not going to be able to get quite as nice of a shot. All right, I have an, I have an idea for you. I have a question for you. Um, I have these three large windows in my shop where I work next to. What do you think? What, do you think there'd be a big effect if I did put a polarizing film like over part of the window or a portion of it at least? Well, that would be insanely expensive. Um, yeah, yeah. But it would work fantastic because you're working with a lot of natural light. Yes. Um, what a lot of people will do is they'll just set up like little lamps. Well, what I would do to help reduce glare from that is I would get some, um, some basically thin cotton curtains like okay. just plain white curtains to diffuse right. the light so that okay. that way it's not a harsh glare. Okay, killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's something it like translucent. The... You can right. see through. It's going to let plenty of light through, but that's not going to make it a very harsh light. It's going to really diffuse that so that that way you're not going to get a concentrated highlight when you're taking your photos. Genius. Genius, brother. Thank you. Well, believe it or not, I do the same thing. And um, I'll show you a little quick and dirty thing that I figured out. So if mm-hmm. I'm using like a spotlight, like a lamp, right? Mm-hmm. I just tape a paper towel over that bitch. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You know what I right mean? On. And that's yeah. going to diffuse that light. So it's not quite as harsh. It's going to be a very soft light. The mm-hmm. only reason why I don't use that lamp right now is mm-hmm. because the light bulb that's in it is so warm. It, mm-hmm. Dude, I, I look like I'm permanently blushing anytime I turn that on. <laughs> no, seriously, it's, it's pretty bad. It's bad. <laughs> like I have to take the saturation on my camera feed way down whenever I turn yeah. that on. So I got to get like a neutral light to put in there. But um, yeah, it's same basic concept. Diffuse, the, diffuse that direct light and mm-hmm. you're going to get a much better picture. Okay. I'll do that. Killer, that rules. Okay. Well, it seems like the highlight feature is working like a charm. Yeah. Nice. So we've got uh, two real nice clips out of this uh, out of the stream. Rock and roll, man. Absolutely. We're gonna have to start going through the uh, list of frequently asked questions. Hmm. Yeah, yeah that'd next, be time there, next, next time there's a lull. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, my lordy. And I'll always go last, too, so I can clean up and be funny, sarcastic with everyone. But, like, do tattoos hurt? Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. I mean, you started on that question. You know better than that, Gabe. How, you know, although, you know what I do love? And I've heard, I've heard this before, the how much do tattoos cost and some of the That's exactly. reactions to that. Well, exactly. see, yeah. I, I heard you talking about that a little bit, and I'd love to. I well, I'd love to talk about it on drunk critique even more than normal. Dude, but, let's uh, do that, man. <laughs> well, I mean, for for me, uh, you know, I do feel like, uh, you know, how much does a car cost? Well, anywhere between two thousand dollars and sixty thousand dollars depends on if you want a good one or if it's new or used, all right? Like, but for like for a hand tattoo, right? You know, it's anywhere between, you know. Six hundred dollars, maybe four hundred, but six hundred dollars to twenty four hundred dollars. You know, you're looking for Mm -hmm. photorealism. You're looking for black and gray. You know, like exactly helping guide a client to the proper range. You know, is uh oh, you know, but I also, you know, it's not quite a. 
it's not quite as open ended as a piece of string, right? The right. Uh, <laughs> but obviously it's uh, you know it, it could be. But I, mostly, I guess what I'm saying is. Uh, but I do want to. We need to get your uh, consultation stuff yeah, set up, right? Huh? Uh, yeah, I'll be wrapping that up this week, man. It's, it's, I'm, not, it's an, I'm trying to put it as legible as I can in outline form and send that over to you first, and kind of just go from there. You know what I mean? So cool. All the little nuances that kind of, you kind of try to categorize to make it a little bit more cohesive for everybody to understand and stuff. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely different uh, buckets to drop things in, you know, yeah. uh, also want to, you know, start, start, start middle finish, you know, get the, uh, it'd be awesome. Sounds, sounds, sounds pretty damn cool. But, good, man. Cool. Thank you. So do you guys want to uh, give some good closing statements, let people know how to find you, then I'll plug reinventing one last time and we'll, uh, yeah. Okay. Sure you. All right, man. Uh, my name is Ricardo Sertavant. I work in Normal, Illinois. You can find me on Instagram at uh, Candor Tattoo. Um, drop me a line. Say what's up. Uh, these are always a lot of fun, man. I, I love I love getting on these these uh, videos and answering questions with everybody and just hanging out, drawing. So uh, hit us up. Take it easy, guys. Take care, bud. Yeah. Cheers. Peace. Cool. So uh, my name is Jason Leeser. For those that uh, might not know me, um, you can find me on Instagram at Philly Inc. I work at a studio called the Inkwell Tattoo in Southampton, Pennsylvania. It's about 30 minutes north of Philadelphia. Um, I love hopping on here. It's always a great discussion. Uh, Gabe, big thanks to you, man, for being the man behind the curtain and taking care of all that stuff. You know, I can't appreciate it more. You can find me on Sunday afternoons at 1 p.m. Um, doing a live drawing group that I usually host through the Reinventing the Tattoo app. If you don't have it, you should probably get it, especially if you're a tattooer. Um, great for networking, going through, asking questions. We're all there to help elevate each other and to help educate each other. And, you know, maybe, maybe you're at a certain place in your career where you know, you can then go through and start passing your knowledge on to other like-minded people. Uh, maybe you're just starting out and you're just learning and you're looking for, you know, tips and tricks on how to troubleshoot things or how to go about approaching things in a different way or thinking about things in a different way. It's, that's the whole purpose behind the group. You know, we're there, we're all there to improve. It doesn't matter where you are or where you're trying to be. You know, we're all there to help each other out. So feel free to download the app, join us. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in uh, one of my drawing groups. Awesome. Yeah, so that's uh, Jason who does groups every uh, Sunday at one o'clock. And uh, you know what, I'm gonna do a full little tour here of the app just um, because, because we're here. And if anybody's watching to the end and you're interested, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. And uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a deep dive because we keep going over the events and such. So thank you, Jason, you feel free to, to hang on and, and for all the kind words. Um, but yeah, so like, I just wanna kind of uh, close this out with a good little tour. So one of the things we, buttons we barely click is the, the my feed. And while you know, there's no spot to post you know, politics or you know, your, your food pictures, it's all about inspiring tattoos. And you'll see here that some of the world's very best tattoos are, are being posted up for inspiration and whatnot. We have, uh, you know, the different notices for the different events, including the drunk critique that's coming up. You know, people are posting up tattoos for critiques. You know, uh, we have uh, original art galleries, uh, you know, uh, Philip Blue's not uh, involved, but we post up all of his videos as soon as we get them you know, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so it's a pretty good spot where people are really just focused on posting awesome, inspirational stuff. Uh, we talk about the library a bunch too, but very rarely do we get into the other sections. We have the inspiring art, past and present, where we have different resources and videos for, you know, different artists that are just, you know, basically should be, uh, you know, required reading or required viewing, you know, for tattooers. Uh, yeah, oh, we have uh, Andrew, Andre Jones here is doing some serious uh, stuff. I think we might be having him come in to do a, uh, a paint jam. Look at, this. Look at this. Oh, man. I wonder if you can see this. This is uh, Andre Jones. You should definitely check out his YouTube channel. Um, but, yeah, so this is the uh, inspirational uh, 
inspiring art past and present. We have a timeline. There's some live stream replays. We have different publications. And then uh, what other sections do we have here to go into? If you are already a member, then you can choose which groups you would like to join. And we have two different sets of lists uh, for collectors. And this has, uh, you know, some of these different optional groups, including an apprentice group. We've got the Fireside Tattoo Podcast group, Collectors group, Hell City Tattoo Fest, Tattoo History Tent, um, as well as a set of groups for tattooers. You know, suppliers we love, machines we love, pigments we love, needles we love, critiques, job board, health mentors, etc. And uh, in this way, you can have that feed kind of customized uh, to your likings. Uh, inside of the art lab here, we have different uh, public exercises. We have subscriber exercises. We have links to the art jams, uh, the collab lab. This is a pretty cool spot where people can join either the, the Dropbox or the Flickr, as well as find collaboration partners inside of the collab group. Um, let me back out here. Oop, I got lost, but if you ever get lost, you can always click on the, uh, the home screen here or the side menu there. Um, yeah, so there's the art lab. We have our galleries, a marketplace. So if you're looking to buy and sell stuff, then yeah, we've got, uh, this is pretty much just the Wild West right now, but um, at some point we'll be getting in between for a percentage. But right now we're just letting everybody kind of post up their stuff, sell their stuff, anywhere from stickers to machines, the bio encyclopedia that guys got, um, you know, all sorts of cool stuff. And then uh, let's see here. Oh, other online courses. We've got Tattoo Education, a full reinventing catalog. The, um, that's in the marketplace. Finer Tattooers a map. Okay. Then I guess uh, I'm just going to wrap it. Oh, no, no. I'm going to wrap it up here with going to courses.reinventingthetattoo.com. And if you are a tattooer or an apprentice and are interested in furthering your professional development, the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon will help. Can't, you can't learn to tattoo with it, but you can learn to tattoo better. And it has you know, 25 plus years of guys' personal experiences uh, boiled down into you know, this pretty amazing resource. It was a book and then it turned into the, an online resource with DVDs, or sorry, a big book with DVDs and then an online resource with some videos. And now it's a, a fully modern uh, online course that has the content in all the right places and all the right manners. And you should check it out. The other section is the courses. Uh, if you click on the courses link here, you get to see all of the other different courses that we have for sale. And um, yeah, the artists get the vast bulk of the dough. So it's awesome to learn and uh, support some artists. Anyways, thank you very much. Uh, thanks again, Jason. And uh, we will catch up again next Monday morning, next Sunday afternoon, or at any of the various activities and art jams, paint groups and uh, whatnot.